So I thought I'd share a video showing me practicing drawing some comic book hair. And I'm using this picture of Akuma from Street Fighter, drawn by the artist Joe Ng. So the first thing that I do after penciling out the face and the hair in these big, big, chunky clumps is I decide to ink it. And instead of using black inks, I decided I'd try and use some brown inks. I'd seen somebody online doing a picture of a face and they outlined all of the features using brown ink instead. And it gave it a much more naturalistic, realistic, softer kind of look than using heavy black outlines. So I thought I'd give it a try using this Statler uh, brown pen. Akuma has got this amazing fiery reddy kind of orange hair so the first decision I made was to use a, a combination of orange and red colors you can see me using here uh, and also to tackle it kind of one clump at a time. The reason I'm drawing this hair is because it's, it's drawn in these big kind of wavy clumps which is very very different to the way I'd usually draw hair so that's why I'm using it to do a bit of practice. So as usual I started with my lightest color which was mandarin but then instead of going to the mid color that was a red called sunset, you can see me using here, I put saddle brown, my darkest brown on first. So I put that on and then I put the red on afterwards to try and blend the brown and the red in. So here you can see me do it again. So I put mandarin on first of all, but instead of going to my mid tone at this point, I then decide that I'm going to put on my darkest color first and then try and blend the dark color into the mid color. So it's kind of different to the way I'd usually do things. Normally I'd put down the sunset and then put the saddle brown on top and then go back through all the markers uh, trying to blend them together. But I actually thought this might be a little bit quicker if I you know, put the darkest color on second and then use the medium color to blend it in. Hopefully I would not have to go back you know, and forth through the set of markers in order to blend it as much as I normally would. So when you see me putting sunset on here, I'm really going up and down over the edge of the saddle brown into the areas that are going to be sunset, my mid color, in an effort to really try and blend them together. And because I don't want a drying line between the sunset and the mandarin, I actually go back in with just the mandarin at this point, just to blend and soften up the edge of where sunset, sunset meets mandarin. So because it's the same method that I use for all the clumps of hair, just thought I'd go in quite close up here so you can see exactly what I'm talking about. So put down my base color, my lightest color, mandarin. And I'm also making sure that the strokes of my pen follow the growth of the hair as well. So it follows that curving sweep of the hair. Then I put in my darkest color. This is saddle brown. And I'm leaving all of the bits that I want to be highlights or I know there's gonna be a bit of sunset there. And now I'm going in with the sunset marker and I'm blending along the edge of sandal brown, uh, trying to blend that in on that edge. And then I go back in with the mandarin to blend along the edge of where sunset meets mandarin. And I actually think that it was quicker and I used um, a fewer sort of sets of markers doing it this way. And because I use the same technique uh, over all of the clumps of the hair, I just figured I'd speed this bit up for you right now. Um, I did, like I said, I found it a bit quicker, but obviously I'm just doing practice here in a sketchbook, um, you know, and the paper's not bleed proof paper. So I had to be quite quick and I didn't want to blend over much because it would saturate the paper and it would start spreading beyond the, the outlines that I'd done. If I was doing this for real, I might find that I'd have to do the whole, you know, up through all of the markers, light, medium, dark, and then back through them, dark, medium, light, in order to get a really nice successful blend. But it's definitely worth trying in future. I'm definitely going to look at, into doing that where I put the lightest color on, then my darkest, then blend the medium color in. I think it just goes to show that I'm still learning new things and new techniques with markers all the time. So after looking at it, um, I decided that I wanted to go back in with the saddle brown and just darken a few of the shadow areas on his sort of on his ponytail, on his top knot. Uh, I didn't want to darken the shadow areas too much on the foreground hair because I'm going to use highlights on that in a minute. And the first highlight I decided to use was um, a watercolor pencil. So I wanted to see how that would look. So I used this uh, Durant watercolor pencil. The same ones I used on the Batman video I did a while ago because they're nice and soft and they give a really good strong lay down of, of kind of very pale white color, uh, definitely on top of markers. And here, as you can see me adding it quite de delicately, quite carefully, again, I'm trying to make sure that the lines I put on here for highlights follow the way that the hair strands would be growing upwards, outwards and, and curving around. I'm a little bit lazy here and I really should be sharpening the pencil quite a lot in between, uh, you know, in between the strands, in between using it in the clumps here because it's a soft pencil so it gets blunter a lot quicker than normal ones. Uh, but if I was doing this for real then I would be sharpening it far more frequently so I was getting nice crisp clean lines every single time I tried to put it down. 
So as I finish up putting the highlights on this right hand side of the hair, um, so far they look really good. I'm really, really pleased with the way that the uh, watercolor marker shows up on top of the markers. But I was kind of sort of umming and ahhing. Was it bright enough? Were the highlights strong and shiny enough? So the kind of stick or twist mentality, stay with it or change it. And it's me, so I decided that I was going to have a go. After all, it's just practice in a sketchbook. So what have you got to lose? So I go and pick up the Pentel Signo gel white pen, uh, white gel pen, and I decided I'm going to put that over the top of the um, the pencil highlights, but not completely cover the pencil highlights. So I'm I'm using the the white gel pen to just be the very very middle bit, the the shiniest bit of shine <laughs> that you would get on the highlights of the hair, just to see how that's going to look. Uh, you know, working together with the watercolor pencil, do they work? Do they not work? And actually, it went on pretty easy. Uh, it skipped a few times. I had to go back over some of the bits, but uh, it actually came off looking okay. Uh, and for a practice sketch, I was quite pleased with what it had sort of, you know, revealed to me. So there you go. There it is next to the original picture that I was using as, as the reference, as the copy. Uh, and, you know, I think this is really going to help me when I come to draw kind of manga faces, uh, you know, these big clumpy bits of hair. So let me know what you think in the comments below. Don't forget to subscribe. And if you like this comic book art, then there's other comic book videos on my channel, the most recent of which is probably this Batman sketch that I did for a... Uh, a nephew of mine. So check that out because it's mixed media. All the links for that kind of stuff are down below this. Thanks very much for watching.